Photoshop is a powerful tool and a needed skill in architecture. So in this video, we're going to talk about 10 Photoshop secrets that you should know for architecture. John, an architecture student. If you're new here, we talk about architecture in general and some tips and tricks in architecture presentation. I'll be dropping all the resources mentioned in this video in the description below for you to look into. So let's get started. The first secret is a hack that I always do to sharpen my images. In Photoshop, duplicate your image and go to Filters, Others, then click High Pass. In this menu, set it to 1 pixel. The lower the pixel, the better because making it too high would make the image chunky. Next, click OK, then change the bending mode to overlay. If it's too much, you can lower the opacity of the layer and you're done. You have a sharpened image. The next one will be enhancing your renders using lighting and specular maps. I always do this trick to make my images more realistic. Just make sure to export the lighting and the specular map of your image. In Lumion, you can export these maps by selecting these buttons before rendering. So in Photoshop, import all images and make sure both lighting and specular map is above the rendered image. Hide the specular map for now and set the layer of the lighting map to overlay. Depending on your preference, set the overlay to about 10 to 20%. This would enhance the image and give some contrast to it. Next, unhide the specular map and set it to screen. This would enhance the reflection of the image. You can lower the opacity to about 10 to 20% as well. You can select all the layers and make it a smart object, then add a camera raw filter to enhance the colors of your renders. The next one is adding motion blur to your renders. First, duplicate your layer by pressing Ctrl J and create a selection around your object just like this. Next, we need to add a mask by clicking this icon below. Go to Filter, Blur, then select Motion Blur. Set the angle of the blur and make the pixels to around 20 to 50 pixels. The number depends on the speed of the motion. I like it around 20 to 30 pixels for people walking or running, and 30 to 50 for moving cars. The blur is still a bit chunky at this point. To fix this, double click the mask and set the feather to about 5 pixels. This will soften out the edges of the selection. The next step is to use Photoshop Actions. Photoshop Actions are basically shortcuts or presets that you can use to automate the redundant actions in Photoshop. It basically records all your actions and does it all again for you once you click play. I made a collection of Photoshop Actions that automate the rendering of floor plans in Photoshop. Check it out in the description below. Let's try to create an action in adding motion blur that we did a while ago. So here's how it works. Before creating the action, we're going to do the selection first since we want the action to work after the selection has been made. Next, press Alt F9 to open the Actions tab. In this tab, you can see a bunch of actions I've made. To make a new one, click this plus icon below, give it a name, set a folder you want it saved, and you can also add a function key as a hotkey for the action. Once everything is set, you can hit record and do all the steps. In this case, we're doing motion blur, so just do the steps in adding a motion blur. And once it's done, hit stop recording by clicking this icon here. You can create a selection like this, hit the hotkey you set it to, or you can just click the action from the tab, then click this play button, and it will automatically add a blur for you. The next hack is to use material IDs for your renders. You can export the material ID before rendering and it would look something like this. All you need to do is to import it in Photoshop and make sure the material ID is aligned with the rendered image. You can quickly select using the magic wand tool or press W. In this case, we want to edit the roof of the building because it's a bit off. So what we can do to select them quickly is to go to select then click color range. Click this button and click the color that you want to select. As you can see, it made a selection for all the roofs since it has the same material ID. You just need to deselect this portion by holding Alt since we don't need it. When enhancing my images, what I like to do is to add U and saturation to the selection and change the bending mode to overlay. This gives the material a little bit of punch and contrast. Then double click on this icon and you can just adjust these settings to your liking. As you can see, it makes a lot of difference. You can apply this trick to other parts of your image to make it a little bit better. I did this to the white walls and some parts of the building. The next hack will be blending images in Photoshop with one click. First, import the cutout to Photoshop and adjust the scale. I normally get high quality cutouts from MrCutout.com and NonScandinavian.com. 
If you want to blend cutouts into your renders easily, just go to Filters, Mural Filters, then select Harmonize. Select the rendered image as your reference and adjust the strength to about 80. As you can see, it automatically blends the cutouts into your image. We don't need to add shadows anymore since the cutout already got shadows. We can also add a motion blur since she is walking. Do the same steps again to the other cutouts and your renders will transform instantly. For cutouts like this, you can add shadows by adding a new layer and select a soft round brush. Press F5 to open the brush settings and drag these points to change the angle of the brush. Next, just tap like this to add shadows and that's it. Use patterns instead of textures. First, you need to download seamless textures online. I normally get mine from architectures.org. There are a bunch of free textures that you can download from this site. Once downloaded, import it into Photoshop. Next, select everything by clicking Ctrl A, then go to Edit and click Define Pattern. Name the texture and click OK. You can see the newly saved pattern by going to Windows, then select Pattern. In this tab, you can see the pattern here. To quickly add textures to your drawing, select the Magic Wand tool, then select the area that you want to render. Click this icon that select Pattern. In this menu, select the pattern that you saved and adjust the angle of the pattern and its scale. Do this step for all the parts you want to render. You can use any selection, tweak the textures, and adjust them to your liking. Once everything is rendered, what I like to do is lower the opacity and have this washed out look. The next one would be Sky Replacement. All you need to do is select the layer, then go to Edit, then click Sky Replacement. Under this menu, there's a bunch of skies that you can choose from. For this case, I'll be choosing this one. You can also adjust these settings to your preference to blend it better. Click OK and it will create new layers for the skies. That's it. The next secret is to use brushes instead of cutouts. Photoshop brushes are very useful especially in adding entourage and scale to your drawings. I have a collection of three brushes that I have made and it is in the description below. You can create your own brushes by downloading an image online. And here's a watercolor tree that I have downloaded. First, add a white background by adding a solid color and make it monochrome by clicking this icon. Then select black and white. Double click the layer and adjust these settings. Make sure the trunk is much darker than the leaves. Next, select everything by clicking Ctrl A then go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. Name your brush and click OK. Press B to select the brush and here you've created a brush that you can quickly make when clicking. Add a few more brushes and give some variations out of it and you're good to go. The last hack would be adding imperfections. The first thing you need to do is to find imperfection textures online. You can find them on Google by just typing imperfection textures or dirty textures. Once you find one, just import it to Photoshop and adjust the scale by clicking Ctrl T, right click, then click Distort. Adjust the points to match the perspective and click Enter. Next, change the bedding mode and choose which suits the best. For this case, soft light would look good. You can add more imperfections and play with the bending modes. You can also use masks and use a soft brush to erase some parts of the texture. And that's 10 Photoshop secrets that I always use in my workflow. If you find this video helpful, make sure to comment down below the number one tip you learned from this video. And that's it. I'll see you on the next one.